Hey, we're back with the final part of what if Gilmei went to the Mugen Train Saga, with Akaza out of Muzan's control and Nezuko becoming the first demon to conquer the sun. How will the story of Muzan's filthy life finally reach its conclusion? Will Muzan become sun resistant? Will Akaza succeed and usurp the throne of Muzan? Will my crush ever unblock me? Let's find out! Three weeks pass after the brutal battle at Tamayo's residence and the activity of the demons reduces significantly over those three weeks. However, the trio who successfully escaped Doma's assault find themselves facing not one, not two, but three upper moons as Gyoko, Hantengu, and the new upper moon six track down their demon <laughs> senpai. But how did we even get here? Let's go back a bit. After the defeat of Doma as Akaza, Tanjiro, and Nezuko head back to the Demon Slayer core, Akaza gets hit with a little paranoia. He explains that he trusted Tamayo, and him, however, he still doesn't believe that he could trust the other Slayers. He also reveals his concerns about the other demons at Muzan's disposal and how they could track them and basically initiate a raid on the headquarters in order to get to Nezuko. Tanjiro agrees and the duo hatches a plan to rendezvous with some of the Hashiras at a location agreed to with the help of the Kasugai Crows. The trio travels through the wilderness for multiple days before they reach the specified location where they meet up with four of the nine Hashiras. As they reach a cave, they spot Gyome, Giyu, Sanemi, and Obanai waiting for them. While Gyome tries his level best to stop Sanemi and Obanai from killing Giyu over his aloofness. As soon as Akaza steps closer to the Hashiras, he is met with their disgusted faces, and he bows his head in shame. Yome breaks the ice by stating that his decision to change paths might actually end up being Muzan's undoing. However, while crushing his palms together, he warns Akaza that he's ready to turn him into dust if he were to ever betray them. Akaza scoffs and answers that he expects no less from a Hashira. Obanai and Sanemi refuse to talk to the demon while barely holding their swords from coming out of their scabbards. All of them head inside a cave. However, in a wild turn of events, it is revealed that Nakime has been following Akaza around for more than a day now using her detached eyes. After a while, the four Hashiras leave the cave and bid farewell to Tanjiro. However, a few hours after they leave, Akaza and Tanjiro once again venture out of the cave to patrol the vicinity and look for any threat that might hinder their plans. However, as the two walk around the forest, they are confronted by the Upper Moons, who corner them immediately. Without wasting a second of time, the newly appointed Upper Moon Six, who is revealed to be none other than Kaigaku, a former Demon Slayer and the senior of Zenitsu, attacks the duo along with Hantengu and Gyoko. Kaigaku dashes toward Tanjiro, but before he could even touch the red-haired Slayer, he is stopped by Akaza, who uses no more than a single arm strength. Kaigaku gets shocked, feeling the pressure of Akaza's strength. But before he could retreat, the upper demon grabs his head and slams him on the ground. He then proceeds to pound Kaigaku into the soil until his body turns into ground beef. Akaza proclaims that it will take him a while to regenerate, and until then, he'll take care of the other circus freaks. Akaza proceeds to rain down a volley of punches upon the upper demons, who prove to be no match for them. Gyoko avoids the punches using his teleportation. However, he realizes that Akaza's destructive death is smashing away at his pots one by one. Antengo isn't doing well either, as Akaza pummels him continuously while dodging Gyoko, proving once again how big the gap between their strengths is. While Kaigaku barely manages to hold on to life due to his demon blood, his mashed up body is still too roughed up to be ready for battle. Antengu transforms directly into his Zohakuten form, while Gyoko reveals his final form as well, ditching his pot. This puts a smile on Akaza's face as he states that he could get rid of two losers at once while Tanjiro watches all the events in horror. As the two upper demons charge at Akaza, we see the shrunken form of Hantengu running inside the cave in order to reach Nezuko and absorb her into himself. Meanwhile, Akaza, while battling both the upper demons, commands Tanjiro to stand his ground and do as he told him before, as Kaigaku will soon recover from being turned into a lasagna. The memories of his family rush inside Tanjiro's head as he grips his sword and rushes to join Akaza. He gets repelled by the sheer shockwaves of their battle. However, he adapts to their speed within minutes. Gyoko isolates Tanjiro and the two begin battling. As Akaza starts beating the living crap out of Zoakuten, he gives a look to Gyoko and conveys a secret message. Suddenly, Zoakuten and Gyoko jump away from Akaza as the ground beneath his legs crumbles, making way for huge whip-like tentacles. Zohakuten reveals that it was a special weapon made exactly for him by none other than Muzan Kibutsuji himself. 
Akaza gets caught up in the tentacles and rubble, rendering him unable to move. As soon as Akaza gets caught, he motivates Tanjiro one last time to do what he told him, prompting the Slayer to close his eyes and focus. Meanwhile, Kaigaku heals himself and looks over at the battlefield. Filled with rage, the upper demon dashes towards Tanjiro to cut him, while the Slayer stands there still as a rock. As soon as Kaigaku is about to cut the Slayer into pieces with his sixth form, he is intercepted by Zenitsu who enters the battle in his usual thunderous fashion. The Pikachu Slayer is accompanied by Inosuke, who dives headfirst into the battle. Tanjiro asks Zenitsu to hold the lower six for him while he takes care of the two upper demons, which baffles both Zenitsu and Inosuke. They reluctantly agree and pursue Kaigaku, while Zohakuten and Gyoko close the distance to kill the Slayer while Akaza is still trapped. Tanjiro, with his eyes closed, deeply concentrates on his heartbeat, raising it to an enormous level. With Gyoko and Zohakuten inching closer, Tanjiro opens his eyes and rushes towards Akaza cutting the tentacles, holding him into shreds. Gyoko and Zohakuten are shocked on Tanjiro's speed, as the Slayer turns towards them to flaunt his newly summoned Demon Slayer Mark. Meanwhile, Hantengo reaches the end of the cave and finds the box in which Nezuko rests. He turns into his Urami form while grabbing the box, effectively smashing it into pieces. However, much to his surprise, it turns out to be empty. Before he could figure out what had happened, he senses that Zohakuten is progressively growing weak, and thus it's better for him to escape while he has the chance. Meanwhile, before he could escape the cave, he is confronted by Akaza and the others, who had successfully killed Gyoko and Kaigaku, while Akaza held a beaten up Zohakuten in one hand. Inosuke rushed off to finish Urumi and cuts him down. However, the real body of Hantengu tries to escape from Urumi's heart and rushes towards the exit. Hantengu runs with all his might, however, as he sees the exit to the cave inching closer, he abruptly stops. Suddenly, his head rolls off his torso, as it is revealed that Akaza sliced off the demon's head using Kaigaku's blade, cutting down the numbers of the upper moons even further. While the slayers celebrate victory, Zenitsu questions them regarding the whereabouts of his dear Nezuko-chan, making them unravel the whole truth. Tanjiro explains that they had been expecting this attack since the day they dealt with Doma, so they knew they couldn't risk exposing Nezuko and hence sent her off with Gyu instead. Zenitsu is still not satisfied as he asks Tanjiro to explain the weird strength boost he got while facing Hantengu and Gyoko. Akaza stops the Pikachu and goes on to explain that he knew about the Slayers who manifested marks, stating that Kokushibo mentioned one of them after his blood battle with him. He explained how horrified the strongest demon was while reiterating the instance about that one particular Mark Slayer and how everyone who came in contact with him developed a Mark as well, including Kokushibo himself. Tanjiro cuts off the explanation, starting that they must hurry towards the headquarters as Muzan could make his next move at any moment. Meanwhile, Gyomi and the others who are on their way to the headquarters discuss the Demon Slayer Mark. Sanemi and Obanai dismiss Akaza's claim, stating that if such a thing existed, they would have manifested it after all these years. Gyome stays silent for a while, but his reply blows the fellow Hashira's minds. He reveals that he was successful in summoning the mark off his own free will after discussing it with Kagaya and confirming that such a power did exist in the earlier days of Demon Slayers. However, everyone who manifested it died at the age of 25. As they inch closer to the headquarters, all four of the Hashira's Kasugai crew appear and announce that Tenjin Uzui successfully defeated the Upper Six duo of Gyotaro and Daki, with the help of Shinobu and Kanao, who trace Tenjin to the Entertainment District as he abducted Aoi. However, as the crows reveal the next part, the Hashiras are driven to a pause. The crows announce that Tenjin succeeded in bringing out his latent potential and unlocked the Demon Slayer mark in order to behead both Yotaro and Daki, who recovered from Shinobu's Wisteria poison. This shocks the Hashiras, however, Sanemi points out that now that so many of the upper ranks have fallen and that Muzan's goal rests solely in capturing Nezuko, the battle that'll decide this world's future is closing in on them. Soon, Akaza and the Kamaboko squad catch up with the Hashiras, who share the news with them as they all head to the headquarters. The Hashiras reach Kagaya's residence, which was revealed to them recently. However, as they approach the mansion, an eerie feeling of unusual silence climbs up the nerves of the Slayers. As they close in on the estate and scour the area, a portal opens beneath the Slayers' feet, and all of them get dragged into the Infinity Castle. They spot Muzan sitting on his throne, however, what they see next sends a chill down their spine. They notice the bodies of their fellow demon slayers, including Mitsuri, Rengoku, and the others lying lifeless on the floor, with Muzan holding onto the head of Kagaya. Muzan tosses Kagaya's head towards the slayers, but before it could reach them, Kokushibo barges into the room and slashes it into bits. 
Suddenly, the room in the Infinity Castle starts spinning as the Slayers are thrown into different areas so that Muzan can kill them off one by one and retrieve Nezuko, who's currently with Tanjiro. Kyomei is once again pitted against Kokushibo along with Giyu and Obanai. However, having seen his skills previously, he goes full power from the beginning and summons his Demon Slayer mark. He goes on the assault and instructs Giyu and Obanai to provide backup. Meanwhile, Sanebi gets stranded in the middle of the castle along with Zenitsu and Inosuke as they spot Nakime controlling the building from a distance. Meanwhile, Akaza paired up with Tanjiro faces a very unexpected foe. They get thrown into a pond-like structure and Akaza mentions that this once used to be Doma's castle. As he finishes explaining to Tanjiro where they are and what they should expect next, they are hit with a blizzard, revealing that all this time Doma was alive and that Kaiga was the replacement of Gyotaro, who was on his way to be discarded by Muzan. However, he got beheaded by Tenjen before he could do so himself. Akaza faces Doma once again, however, he promises that he will end him this time around, while taking his stance with Kaigaku's sword in his hand. Tanjiro summons the Demon Slayer Mark and within a few milliseconds, both of them rush towards Doma. With a sarcastic smile on his face, Doma once again builds his Ice Buddha statue up. However, as both his opponents strike it at the same time, it crumbles into tiny pieces, along with his hope of winning and seeing his next move. Both of them rush towards Doma and simultaneously behead him, ending the murderous streak of the psychotic demon. The duo moves forward and luckily, they join up with Gyome and Gyu, who defeated the upper one after all of them got their marks. However, they lost Obanai in the process. As the Slayers build up the strength to move forward, they are stopped in their tracks for the last time when Muzan himself arrives at the scene and demands that they hand over Nezuko. However, before their battle could even begin, the Infinity Castle started to crumble as Nakime got beheaded by Sanemi and the others. Muzan rushes towards the Slayers to snatch Nezuko away from them. However, before he could do so, he gets held up by Akaza who severs his whips using a Nishirin blade. Realizing that the castle is about to collapse and that everyone is going to die nonetheless, Akaza grabs Muzan mustering all his strength, prompting the Slayers to behead him before the castle collapses. Suddenly, the castle collapses and all the Slayers get buried underground along with Muzan. Thus ends the saga of the 20th century demon Slayers with Muzan buried deep inside the earth, waiting for someone to free him someday.